Welcome back, Disc Golf World. My name is Kevin Jones, and with me is Luke Humphreys. Luke, how are you doing today? Solid, brother. Good to be here with you. Stoked to watch some of this coverage sponsored by Prodigy Disc Golf, Blue Ribbon Pines, and Gotta Go, Gotta Throw. We've got you, Kale, Paul, and James Conrad on the card. Kale is shredding so far. Hole 10. Um, what do you got for us? Hole 10 is a nice hole. You got an option. You can go right side fairway, which is a little bit messy with some late trees. There's also OB stretched out there on the right side. So if you take a kick and fly to the right, you could be dealing with OB, which is an awful scenario on this hole. The left side fairway is open, but pretty tight and difficult. I'm opting for that F5 flick here, trying to get a little bit of S curve. Oh yeah. Just in front of the tree that I wanted, not at the correct height and pretty much gonna be a three from there. Yeah, but not a bad one. This hole coming in as the 17th hardest hole, but a tricky one to park. Whoa, and here's Kale's flippy M4. Oh, wow. No, he didn't. Wow. He is slaying. His backhand angles couldn't be better. It's so much fun to watch. Hope you guys at home are enjoying it as well. Looks like Paul's going maybe hyzer gap with a fairway driver? I think so. Yep, and this is when it needs to start missing. Oh, that's as clean as you can do it. He's spitting on the high basket. He does crazy things. Yeah, Paul, that, that was Paul a Uliberry. very high level shot. James got that KJ Nibo T-Bird. Looking to get it a little flatter. He'll be most likely jump putting up to the stump and taking his three, maybe even throwing. But yeah, same result. Effective, about 20 feet from there maybe. And are you running this? No. Not a chance. Yeah. VRP is nice because you don't have to birdie every hole. So these holes are so difficult that if you make it down the fairway and you have the option just to lay up a nice jump putt and make a stress-free par, that's definitely the answer sometimes. Yeah, live to fight on one of the other 27. Right. Paul here, uphill, elevated basket, just outside the circle. Mm. And he had some tree some branches in the way there so he goes to the the low spinner pitch jumper on that one <laughs> i'm just gonna go back and forth i'm i'm honestly i'm kind of befuddled by it james converting for his par befuddled by what i mean the way that yuli thinks, th thinks about stuff i mean he's a brilliant golfer and and an even better you know mind player and I just wonder specifically what it is that's making that decision for him. This is a tricky putt here. Yeah, I think he's left with, okay, I was gonna say do an any putt there, but yeah. try to just drop it in and that's a three putt and that's what's gonna happen on this elevated basket. That's exactly what you were talking about. Kale, tapping in another one. Six under through 10 holes, the hardest portion of the course. Just setting a precedent. Yeah, for a backhand down the left side of that fairway is an incredible shot. Nice job, Kale. Six under. Prodigy, on this card at least, is doing pretty good right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that is a great one from him. That was a cool shot of him doing the MJ tongue out. interesting hole here OB both sides of this little fairway and for the entirety of the trees so you have to get yourself out into the field to be safe and there is OB behind the green as well so this is the first of three island holes at Blue Ribbon Pines 
and if you miss the gap here, you're pretty much going to be OB and sacrificing a par and likely going to make a bogey. Kale out in the gap, perfect flex, and perfect distance control. Hits the pole. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Seven under through 11 holes. So crazy. Yeah, that's fire. And the, the level of the shots that he's just executing is nuts. Myself just worried about hitting the gap and I'm out there somewhere with a, a birdie putt. Can't complain. No, you'll be left with a, a semi-tricky bid. You just got to keep aware that that OB is long. James, going back to that Avier well of his, he throws like four or five of these things with varying stabilities. Only he knows which ones they are and what they do. <laughs> we all just watch in amazement. Yes, as he parks this hole. He's two over par right now, but in no time he'll be one over and hopefully fighting back to even. Yep, headed headed the right direction. Here's Yuli's chance at even par. Going with his signature Raptor. Definitely getting it high enough, but respecting that OB. Um, Do we have any cool hole stats on this hole, Luke? Hole 11 played under par by 0 0.12 strokes. There were 40 people birding it. 23 people threw it OB, um, and that's why there were six fives and 15 fours on what should be, you know, a pretty easy hole. Myself from Circle's Edge. Hello. Hello, baby. <laughs> Late release there. <laughs> not, ball. not your best putt. What'd you say? Oh, I, there's no telling. <laughs> James tapping in for his routine two. Kale will be doing the same. This is definitely one you want to get. Pretty signature hole here at Blue Ribbon Pines as well with the turf fairway down the middle. And this hole plays as a bonus hole for some of the league play around, which has A spots that get well over $3,000 regularly. Yeah, so. They, they'll give you three holes to, to hit the ace on for huge money, and a lot of times this is one of them. And the hard thing about this hole is that there's always wind whipping that you can't really feel from the tee box. For sure. Worth taking a step out there um, if you're playing a, a tournament round or something like that. Kale goes to seven. I mean, you're at five, totally respectable, even really good, and he's just on fire with that pace. Yuli and James just dragging a little bit, but... You know, starting to find their groove, it seems so. Yeah, the, be the beauty of this place is it's a journey through the whole course. So much sco score changes are gonna happen and there's just so much that can happen from here into hole 27. So we just flew through hole 12 here. Yeah, OB everywhere on this hole. Yeah. And if your your drive doesn't land in bounds, you're going to a drop zone that's about 50 feet. Um, and so you have a chance to save your par, but there's OB everywhere around the basket that can lead to throwing OB again. Oh no. And Kale headed directly for that bunker that's... Yeah, and that is a very common OB right there. That big bush tree kind of thing is right in between you and the basket and it all plays OB. If you throw in there, in Kale's case, he overturns it. And that's how he finds that OB. Conrad going to try to play what Kale was intending on doing here with a rock. Yep, yeah, a little wider, a little flatter. It makes it hard, I think, being blind. Just not sure exactly of the distance. James pushing the ceiling, headed for OB. What? Spins back in bounds. I mean, that was fully out of bounds at one point. What we just saw spins back in bounds. It is amazing. An ace run, the height on it was crazy good, and he still gets to be in bounds. I mean, the OB is seven feet away from the basket. How, yeah. How are you supposed to ace run that in? Stay on. Mind blown. Hold can't, on. Can't be Ouch. Serious, dude. It hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Myself, you just saw the headwind got the best of me there. I tried to commit to a shot, and I overcommitted and uh, flipped it OB. Really? Yuli looks to be following suit. Yeah, tricky winds out there in that field. They blow so much stronger right there in the middle than you can feel from the tee box or the basket. And yeah, you you have to know what's going on out there and you have to be sure of it because it's gonna 
affect your disc big time. Yeah. We're almost a guaranteed bogey from this drop zone unless yeah. you make a crazy putt. Yeah, there was 39 people that went out of bounds on the drive. Whoa. And only two of them saved their par. Nope. Two of 39 putts. Mm. And I'm sure everybody was pretty much running them. Mm. Nobody wants to take this bogey. Was Yuli one of them? Sit. No. Did it sit? Uh, yeah. Oh my so. goodness. So risky to run that. This hole playing 0.29 strokes over par came in as the seventh hardest hole in the course. Conrad getting low. And nicely done. Seeing his disc kind of like float back in bounds was sweet. Yeah, I just hovered back. It's still hurting my head to comprehend exactly what happened, but James does James things and we don't know why. They just happen. <laughs> Paul in for his bogey. So disappointing. The swing there, right? We just had three bogeys. And like, yeah, three bogeys and a birdie. So James picking up two strokes on the entire card. Yeah, James wanted 16 people to get the birdie on that one. Now you see that patented follow through, step over that gets him in trouble occasionally on elevated tee boxes, but man, is he good at it. Coming into another hard hole. That's right, Luke. This is another hole where we're teeing off in the trees and so it's important to walk out into the open get a feel you know lick your finger and stick it up in the air and which side is cold is going to tell you which way the wind is blowing from if you didn't know yeah and there might be some grass around that you could pick and throw too i don't know maybe <laughs> that's usually my method of choice this hole is a very unique hole it's a huge spike hyzer and did i say huge because it's massive yep yep huge yep most people are just kind of like playing a hyzer over the creek and sacrificing their birdie play and just trying to make a three on the hole. But people with Conrad power, definitely trying to attack the hole. Actually attacking this one, yeah. It takes, wow. I don't know, probably close to 500 feet of power to get all the way around the trees, keeping it that high. Players are dealing with a right to left wind, so they're starting it even more out to the right, which seems a bit crazy. Kale playing this lower line. Did he go out? Man, I think he did. It was hard to tell. Either way, I mean, fantastic shot out of Kale. He won't stop throwing good shots. This is extremely sought off. And I am on the, the good side of the tree there, safe and a little bit tricky, but should should find some way to get a par, I think. Right, so that creek plays OB, and then there's OB long. You've hit a tree right in between them, kind of looking at a, a jump right approach or something to a, a pretty easy three for you. Right, and this looks a little bit nicer. Needs some good action on the ground. Ooh, coming in just, coming in just early. That's pretty much a three. Yeah, but he was five feet from getting around the corner and leaving himself um, a putt. You're going forehand roller again. And lots of people might not know this about you, but you throw forehand rollers in your practice rounds basically on every hole. Right, I grab my PA3s just like that, and every time we're walking to the next hole, I'll just zip a forehand roller to the tee box, and it makes me feel so comfortable in moments like that. So I'm really thankful that I do that. Yeah, just messing around, but practicing at the same time. James taking this one serious, greeny in hand. Long, soft bids. And you've got to be careful. The way that this basket's raised with those ties, a layup can roll OB, just catching. And, and Kale is OB. You can see his disc right behind him. Really unfortunate break for such a good shot. Yeah, the action on that disc didn't even make sense. And then we see a not committed putt right there from Kale, just immediately carding a bogey. Yeah, that happened really fast. Good putt from you. He's been hitting those the entire time. 
puts himself inside the circle on a really hard hole. Unfortunately, it's OB and doesn't make the putt and just boom, you know, a little momentum stall. Yeah, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm putting for par, it's a little bit uh, more nerve wracking than maybe my birdie putt. Yeah, yeah, you want them more. You have to have it. It keeps the it keeps the momentum. It keeps everything going. It's, mm -hmm. it's huge to have those par putts. Sick look at Paul. These slow-mo shots are incredible. Huge thanks to Parsafe Productions for providing this fantastic coverage of this legendary event. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a huge shout out. Minnesota gang, just killing it. We're back in the woods here, just beyond the last hole. And this is pretty much your straight putter shot, if you ask me. And I, we've got three really solid straight putter throwers. And then we have one technical sidearm specialist, being Paul Ulibari, who's going to try to flex a overstable sidearm in there, which is a great play as well. And it was kind of the, the normal play until recently when that right gap opened up. I think it had been a flex forehand previously i actually didn't know that a lot of people throwing that putter shot now this is actually a bonus hole too you can see the orange sign just next to james right there james caged out for a three thousand dollar ace on this hole in that league ground that we played together that's right lipped out lipped out for three thousand dollars just a awesome attempt at it i mean 200 was going to go to each of us i know we wanted it to go in it would have been sick <laughs> PA3, little inside, out of you. Abnormal. You're one of the best putter throwers in the world. Yep, a misfire there. And it's costly, too. That puts me way right. And I've got, I've got to get really creative from there. Yep. Paul stable disc. Oh, it, was, it was beautifully done and then <laughs> caught the one tree it needed to miss. Worth noting, you can be well inside the circle in this hole and totally blocked by trees. With a recessed basket and trees around it, it does make for hard approaches. So, um, you know. Kale surprisingly missing that line as well. He threw a three, uh, Spectrum PA3 there. Had to get creative there, kind of threw a, a F5 thumber. Wow, really high up in the air and just kind of, that was my only gap. Wow. Grab chains. That would have been huge after the bogey and the bad tee shot to can one like that and just pick that momentum back up. Paul, Heiser putt. Cash. Oh my goodness. Big time putt there from Paul Yumari. Yeah, it's like he hasn't done it before. Yeah. He's done that thousands of times before, and look at another look of this one. I mean, it's all of 100 foot, isn't it? Uh, yeah, very close to it. Wow. Dead center. Around the trees, like, <laughs> so nice. Wow. Just a sly grin coming out of his face. Here you are, sir. He's a showman for sure. That's fun to watch. Conrad there with the best drive of the card, uh, kind of overturning a putter, which is actually a nice play. Like it, you'd rather overturn it than saw it off because there's more room to work. I think he did that really well and you know, cards a birdie. Yeah, for sure. We had 40 birdies on this hole coming in at 0.27 strokes under par. This is one you definitely wanted to attack and get your birdie on. Must be one of the more easy holes on the course. Yep, it was the 24th hardest. So, yeah, fourth easiest hole on the course right there. So lately we've, we've seen the top of the card being myself and Kale kind of slow down, take a couple bogeys, and then Paul and James have picked up a couple strokes, kind of bringing us a little bit closer together. Yep, evening things out, 
coming into hole 15. Pretty easy little sidearm if you got it, but the hanging basket will make things tricky. That's so true, and it's actually a something to think about is it's a different style basket too so sometimes people try to putt softer on this one and it can get in their head uh, but such a unique basket and it looks so good it's fun to play one of few true hanging baskets that i've played yep like yep. loose hanging right up high to you know really making it hard james throwing that green putter i mean it almost hit the trees on the left and now it's as good as it could be yeah, that's what you have to do with that, that, that putter shot. Fantastic. Paul going Raptor, looking to skip around the corner, throw something lowish. That's well done out of him. Yeah, kind of scary how wide he hung it, but overall, well done, and that's where you want to land. Yeah. What is this, an X1 out of you? It's my beefy X1. Very overstable disc. Couldn't see the flight because I was in the way there. Mm, bounces off the step. Wow. Did you Bunch see that? Bunch of action. I did. That was cool. Slick step, the slick stump there. And uh, so I'll be putting from a similar distance as the other guys, just on the other side of the basket. Wow. Kale. It's so per that was so perfectly done. Basically inside of the mulch is where it landed. I, I mean, he plays it every day. Okay, I get that. But this is still really good golf that he's playing here crazy shots to be throwing backhands on when it's just obviously a righty forehand hole yeah good catch there yep i'm very happy with that putt and that kind of gets me back on a, a birdie train hopefully had a slow last few holes and that brings me to five under par nice and committed see that thing almost come out the backside like you were saying Kale said, leave it, eh? Kale said, leave it. He said, people usually get the basket like swinging if they go retrieve it. That makes sense. It does not bother Kale at all. I love it. I love like the <laughs> casual feeling. It's kind of my style. I wouldn't leave it if I were you. Inspects it, leaves it as is. And James looking to complete his birdie as well. Maybe pick up the star frame on this hole, which would make sense. No. Uncharacteristic. Coming in as the 23rd hardest hole on the course, 42 people were able to get their birdies on this. But the hanging basket did come into play. We had one four putt and three three putts on this basket. And we see another putting mishap. Uncharacteristic from these guys. Two of the best putters in the world for sure. So half the card here, carding birdies, myself and Kale. We, we wanted to see more birdies there for sure. Everybody's trying to get that hole and that's gonna be bringing us to a, a tough next hole, right Luke? Dude, that, hold on, that shot of Officer Jones there throwing that forehand. Got to say, that was fantastic, but yes, yes. Tough par four coming up, <laughs> lake for your tee shot. I mean, this is another one that really gets you thinking as you're starting off. Um, you're just trying to peer it and get yourself up there into the green grass that you can see. And if you've done that, you've cut the hole in half and you've made it really easy on yourself. Yeah, this hole is really gorgeous as it brings us into the open view of the Blue Ribbon Pines clubhouse right there. Um, such a nice hole. The, the gap off the tee is super scary. That's just leaking a little high for myself. Yeah. Perfect spot, though, yeah, that it ends up in. A lot of people opt in forehand. It's whatever you feel comfortable hitting the gap with at the end of the day. You just need to get hit through here clean and move it a little right. That's exactly right. No, oh, and that. No, and that's no. just the worst reaction off the tree, man. It kicked it straight down, lost all the speed, and went out of bounds. Yeah, he was left of the, the left tree, so he was where he didn't want to be anyways. That was, you know, that was a missed shot, but it could have worked out. Unfortunately, it didn't. He'll be going to a drop zone short of the lake. I don't. Can you get up and down from that drop zone? You could. It'd be very, very hard, though. Con this is hopefully what Conrad's about to throw here is the ideal shot. A T-bird 
stripe down the middle, out the opening, into the grass where the sun is. I mean, he's done all the hard work. It'll be putter approach for him from there. Yep, and that's just kind of how the hole shapes. I think there's the most room for error there. Throwing a flat fairway, maybe work it just a little bit right, but not too much. There is OB on the left side of the hole as well, though. So if you leak off, you could find yourself OB. Thank you. And that was a funny moment there because a fan was like, get over the water. <laughs> and Paul immediately knew it didn't have a chance of doing that. And he got a kick out of the guy having hope for his disc. Kind of funny. Here they are at the drop zone. Kale not even attempting anything crazy. He, he's just going to have to take a bogey here. No. Really does get aggressive. I think he is trying to get up and down from there. I don't think there's any OB over there. There could be. There's that creek on the other side of the trees. He didn't make it near that far, but okay. there's that creek once you get out. Yeah, Kev. This looks perfect. Sticky grass holding it right where it lands. You know that. Played it well. Be rewarded with your birdie most likely, James, from position A. Yeah, this is a money spot. He's just been throwing the old greeny all day. Because he keeps throwing it right next to the basket. I like that play. I think me and Paul Ulibarri knew what his disc was going to do there. Mm. We were expecting the cut roll, and it was the perfect cut roll. Right to the pin. Kale with a little bit of work left to do here. He needs to put that one close enough to get up and down. Looks mm. like he will. He's left himself 24. That's probably 20 more than he wanted. Shouldn't be a problem, though. Paul just, man, this is not where I thought his disc was going to go. I didn't realize it was this bad. Yeah, this is pretty much dead center of the junk on the right side. You're not gonna be able to go like eye level. You gotta go high or forehand roller. And Yeah, when you see a guy standing in the woods with three discs right. looking straight up, it's not good. <laughs> Never a good sign. And he actually got out to the other side, which is nice. Still is gonna cost him a stroke. Yeah, unfortunate for him. Starts with a tee shot. Great putt from Kale. That was a beautiful putting stroke. It's so pretty to watch. We actually putt with the same putters. I'm using the Glow model, the P model S's as well. I mean, they're just fantastic, glidey, straight, hold any line we put them on. If you hadn't tried them out, it's definitely a putter um, worth giving a shot. They are flying off the shelves. Yeah, coming back in stock like here any day now. Um, and they should have a bunch of different varieties and colors. We've also got them in the Duraflex plastic too, so. Shop.prodigydisc.com. There it is. Double bogey out of Paul. Just not typical. Trying to do a lot from the drop zone and got himself a little bit of trouble and that's what you're gonna find yourself doing, but he's also over par. He's, he's feeling like he needs to make a move at this time. And Kale moving back to five when he was at seven just shortly ago. Interesting hole here. The locals call it Poli Poli. It's only out here for the Majestic for the most part. It's 220 feet wide open. You just gotta land it in the short grass. Yeah, so how big do you think this island is? It, it, it can't be more than 45 feet wide. Right. Not much bigger than our circle, our 10 meter circle. And if you go OB, you're gonna have a 35 footer, a death putt, or a par. And I actually, I think it's probably substantially smaller than a circle. If the basket was placed in the middle, it would probably be less than 20 feet away from the OB at all times. Really? Yeah. I don't think you'd have that. Yeah, that's wild. That's a really small circle, and there's going to be a bunch of wind out there as well. If you miss it, you're going to a drop zone that's placed just outside the circle. You can see Ray in the background there on the far left in the black, smiling. He's the owner of the property and an awesome disc golf advocate. We're lucky to have him with us. James. We're so lucky to have Ray. James showing us how it's done, Luke. Yeah. Very nice shot. Yeah. Wouldn't expect anything less from him. 
tail spectrum PA3 needs to get down. Come on. I mean, that's that's painful. That's four inches. Yeah. This whole, you've got to be so accurate. At the end of the day, we know what we need to do. You leave ripping on a Raptor, just kind of soften it out there. Oh, perfect. Nicely done. Sidearm is a fantastic play for this hole. He's actually going with a fast disc. Here's Kale's putt for par. Nice. Oh what? my gosh. Off the bottom of the cage and into that metal piece that the basket's standing on. Double OB, that's, that's just hard to watch. There were actually four people that went double OB on this hole. 33 people didn't save after they went OB. Nine were able to save that went OB. Um, it's basically just a circle's edge putt, but there's OB everywhere. And Kale pays the price, unfortunately. Sure does. Not the score that you want to take on this hole. And I'm taking a three myself, missing a short putt. But James parking it. Still getting a couple strokes on Kale at the same time. Doesn't feel as bad. Yeah, I mean, it's true. You never want to see your competitor fail. You'd rather beat them at their best, but um, at least you're not losing strokes to them. Just an unfortunate, I mean, he was four inches away from being in bounds, and then he was two inches low on his putt, so a combined seven inches cost him four strokes. Yeah. Three strokes. That's some crazy stuff to think about. Yeah. The game of inches. Yep. And hole 18 is going to bring us to our final hole of the middle nine. And yeah, it's one of the most famous holes on the course. If you haven't seen it, you're missing out because it's a driving range hole. You get to try to crush your drive as far as possible. But for that, that high level touring pro, they have a decision to make. Do they want to clear that creek or do they want to lay up before it? What is the creek to clear? Creek, it's, it's like 450. Yeah, which is a bomb. James, no problem. Wow. Well over, and, I, and it's not like we have much of a helpful wind right now either. Throwing 550 right there, James Conrad. Smashing it. Yuli ripping on a nuke. Yeah, that needs to get, uh, Yuli needed to get that Go. a little more. Go. Oh my goodness. It is. Oh my goodness. He's safe on the path. <laughs> no way. He needed to get that more turned over if he wanted to get over the creek, but luckily he landed in the one safe spot. Oh my goodness. How lucky is that? And this is the red D2 out of you? Red D2 on full hyzer. Wow. Gets to flat, never turns over, but goes. Goodness gracious, 530, 40 feet. Something like that, right where I wanted. That's Game a smash. Kale 750 D1. Is he going for it? No, no he's, he's said trying sit. to lay up that, that little, um, sit down. Okay, so that little uh, turn to the right is what scared him. Really mm -hmm. wanted really wanted his disc to sit after that. And it's like the main bush that can be in your way for this second shot. And he's pretty close to it. Doesn't, did it look like it was in a shot? It might have been something to think about. Yeah. Sit. Okay, okay. Looks that's, like, that's solid. Looks like the same disc that he threw, just that 750D1. If he would have hit the dirt, he could have flared quite a ways, possibly even OB because there's OB back there. The OB in the front of the green that Yuli just clears there is a, is a dangerous part of the hole. If you go OB in that, you're gonna have to take it on the other side and it's gonna be a long putt. Yep, you're looking at about 50 feet from the other side of that hazard. Yuli ripping on an onyx it looked like. James just a mere putter after that monster drive. And that looks great. Man, he's dialed with those things. That's so good. And if you don't have to putt on this hole, that means you threw such a well-placed shot because it's very hard to park the hole with the OB. Looks like you're going A2. Yep. Oh my gosh, Kev. Were you trying to make it? No, I was definitely trying to secure the birdie there, but 
Luckily, the basket got in the way from about 250 feet out, and I almost got an eagle there. Yeah, three inches away from it. Incredible, and it just stayed right there, too. Yeah. Tapping birdie. Gotta love it. Yuli, after being safe on his drive, looking to capitalize on that here. Just one of those days, it seems, you know, we all have them just to touch off. That's right, but so many holes in this round that you can get off, you can get on. You just got to keep battling. Yeah. And, you know, most of us are aware that Yuli was dealing with a knee injury for a large part of last year. He hasn't played, I, I don't think, but two events maybe in the past eight months. So he's just kind of getting himself back into it at the same time. He's... An incredible player, one of our, our best talents. It'll be fun to watch him progress again. Yeah, it's great seeing him back and competing at a full potential. Officer Jones representing. That's me. All right, and that rounds out this front. Uh, middle nine, actually. Officer Jones there ripping on a 600-footer. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thank you to Prodigy, Gotta Go, Gotta Throw, and Blue Ribbon Pines for sponsoring this coverage. I'll come back and see us for the, the final nine. Yeah, things are about to get exciting. Thanks for Parsave for covering this event for us. Such a legendary event here in the Minneapolis area. Hopefully you guys come back and join us for the final nine of the first round.